such a pleasure to have you here with us in London. Um, kick off with a brief introduction. What can people expect from the film Maestro? This is an amazing movie where the music is really its own character. And I think the soundtrack, of course, it's all Bernstein's music that people will discover. But I think it's the soundtrack of life. And it shows you how music and life are not separable. You know, it's really uh, a story of a composer, conductor that really showed all its complexities through his music making. And this is why, as a musician, I love it, because it shows the power and the emotion of music. And in terms of bringing your expertise to advising on set, talk us a bit through, you know, what, what you do as your day job, but then also what your role in helping make the film. So I'm a conductor in life. I do. Uh, I accumulate many jobs. You know, Philadelphia Orchestra, Metropolitan Opera in New York, and Orchestre Metropolitan in Montreal. Um, Bradley asked me to be his conducting consultant. Of course, he's a great actor, so he could really um, get what Bernstein was doing with his eyes, with his with his mouth, with uh, his shoulders. But he needed guidance to be able really to conduct the London Symphony Orchestra and London Symphony Chorus and being believable whilst really being Bernstein. So I gave him some technical assurance so he could let his talent fly and being really in the moment emotionally. And how did he do? Were you blown away? I give him a 10. <laughs> it's fantastic. He's a 10 plus. And what, what is it about um, th this film in terms of not just capturing the person, but there's very much delving into, you know, being a creative. So you're having to balance the sacrifices in life. And is it worth it in the end? So coming from the creative industry yourself, how do you see that? And what, what's represented in the film? What's amazing is that all the complexity of the man and the music is there. Bernstein loved many things, as he says in the film. So you see it in real life, you see his love for his wife, you see his love for men. And as myself, an openly gay conductor, I find it refreshing that we also talk about the complexity of not fitting in only one mold. Uh, but musically, I think Bernstein showed us the way. Nowadays, we accept that people do Broadway, film music, classical music. But in Bernstein's days, it was not accepted. So he was really ahead of its time. And I think it's very inspiring to see for a younger generation to discover that such a man had such an impact. And he would be pleased to see that the world is more accepting of this now. Do you have a favorite moment in the film? And perhaps better to ask you a favorite piece of music? <laughs> I mean, of course, as the conductor there, my favorite moment is the Ely Cathedral scene where six minutes of the Mahler Second Symphony are played and conducted and sung. This is an amazing moment where I feel like people forget they're in a movie, they think they're in a concert and they it's so powerful emotionally. But I have so many favorite moments also. Some of them are in silence. I think the, I think, uh, the last moments of Felicia when uh, the last moment before she 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 dies i think this is such a mind blowing performance from Carrie Mulligan and so real and I'm sure it's going to resonate with many people. Ultimately, what do you think people take away from watching the film? I guess it is understanding the power of music and something that he was very passionate about getting people to understand. It's understand the, the real point of this film is really to understand how life and music are not separable. You know, a composer, a creative person, a conductor, or even you know a singer or an instrumentalist, we put all our life experiences in what we do, and sometimes we tend to forget about this and so I think for all the artists here this is going to be refreshing but also I think for people who are not necessarily into music I hope they're going to want to listen more Bernstein more Mahler because the music that we give as symphonic musicians classical musicians it's music that's really for everyone to feel to embrace to feel the power of this music so it's a gift from heaven that Bradley Cooper decided to put his energy at the service of this great art form I'm very grateful and can you tell us what you're going to be working on next? And, you know, in terms of your experience of working in this industry, do you think there's still some progress to be made? You know, it can still be a bit conservative. The first thing I'm going to say is that there's quite a few classical music films at the moment. You know, Tar last year, uh, then Maestro. I also worked on another film that's about to be released, um, Days of Happiness, a Canadian film about a young woman conductor up and coming. So. 
I think there's a lot to be discovered. There's something in the water that maybe Hollywood likes to have classical music world there. And my world of classical music is changing. It's becoming more diverse, it's becoming more welcoming, and I feel like we can all gain by listening to each other and between art forms. So I'm now that I've worked on a film, I'm, I can't wait to work on another one. I mean, there's nothing concrete at the moment, but I, I hope there's more. And can I have to make a comment of your amazing outfit? I mean, and you, I saw, you. saw the heels on your shoes, not a detail yeah. missed. Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, it's a Marvel collection for Louboutin, and I could not resist. It, they, they were made for me. <laughs> amazing. Well, you look incredible. Thanks so much. Enjoy the night. Cheers. Nice to meet you.